I weep for the judgment that's going to come on the wicked rulers who, this is so sad, they're using the pseudo power of mammon, money, to draw in the flocks. And it appears really official from the outside. That's the seduction of the church building. Like the same seduction of the, uh, when the, the, the Jews said to Jesus, do you see how beautiful these buildings are? And Jesus said, yeah, they'll be torn down brick by brick. <laughs> Love you guys, but I'll raise up three days later. The church, man, there is an anointing available through Christ if we would just submit to the way he wants to do things. To where 1 Corinthians 11, no one will be sick, no one will die if we rightly divide the word of truth. And why are there thousands upon thousands of church buildings with people inside with diseases and injuries and wheelchairs, heartbreak that never gets healed, deliverance is never received? It says in James, come before the elders. And it says, confess your sins to one another. There is a, there is a Jesus structure for the church where the fullness is available. And there is a harsh, harsh judgment. Remember what the scripture says, not let many of you be teachers. So we've gone directly against the scripture that said, there shouldn't be too many pastors and teachers. We just don't want there to be a whole lot of teachers. And the church became nothing but teachers. I mean, it's a pseudo power of mammon. If you can go to a, a college and get a degree, and you can ask for money and people give you money, and you can plant a church building, and to the eyes of the unsuspecting, that's legitimate because you had the resources to build a building. Follow with me here. This is not an unequivocal damnation of every church building. But think about this. Imagine, imagine you knew nothing about Christianity. Listen to my story, imagine with me. There is a kingdom going through the earth in power, supernatural power, the joy of the Lord, miracles, revelation, understanding of the scripture, love community, Imagine Jesus and the 12 disciples going forth into the earth. It's, it, Jesus said the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. So there's that system, the kingdom of God. Invisible, underground, persecuted, underdog. Well, there was an established church building at the time, guys. It was called the temple. And even though Jesus is doing these marvelous miracles where people are actually getting healed and they're getting brought into heaven there's still people who are looking at them going not even seeing blind eyes being opened or, or, or lepers being healed and said yeah but Jesus do you see these church buildings aren't they so glorious Isn't, wasn't Solomon so cool how he married all those foreign wives and got into idolatry and died a horrible death Jesus said yeah that's going to be destroyed so you got to realize it's possible for these two camps to still be alive today in the earth. Jesus and his disciples roaming the world in small numbers, looking like outcasts and losers, but actually having the morning star, actually having the, the glory in them. And then the pseudo power of money where um, you went through the institution, the Greek institutions, Remember, when the, when the Holy Spirit went into Greece, there was an uproar. The vocational institutions were very angry at the gospel. They weren't. And then, oh, thank you, Jesus. They actually tried to establish it. So this is what, this is what the, the pseudo power of knowledge and money does to the gospel. It takes the gospel and it tries to cloak it in the garments of Zeus. Oh, you're not Paul, you're not Silas, you're Zeus and you're Hermes. We're going to worship you. And Paul was like, no, and he ripped his garments. He said, no, 
we're just men like you. Jesus is deity. That's who we're worshiping. That's who we're bringing to you. Jesus. So in the same way, Christianity leaned into the Greek systems, into the human systems and said, exalt us. Not true Christianity. We, we reached out to um, we reached out to the college institution and but when the gospel goes through, it's tongues of fire, uproars, everyone thinks they're drunk, healings, shadow healings. Uh, so there is a danger in you can fully exalt yourself if you have enough money. Like anybody could go use their money, buy their way into a seminary, get get a uh, earthly pastoral certificate, and then buy a congregation. Remember that uh, Simon the Sorcerer wanted that ability. He wanted to, be, to buy the ability to give people the Holy Spirit. But I've been in religious churches my whole life where there is not a drop of manifestation. And when Jesus finally got a hold of me, it was sleeping on uh, my drug dealer friend's couch. It just came to me in a dream. Sorry, he's a weed dealer. Not drugs, but... And he, that man is amazing, full on, uh, full on good Samaritan, you know. And so the church has been in a season for a thousand years of God's only using good Samaritans and little renegade apostles and prophets he's rising up and pastors. You know, the Catholic structure of buying a congregation and then spending all... Uh, Summoning the anointing, and if the anointing does show up, you use that time to ask for tithes. Which, I mean, if the Holy Spirit called you to do that here and there, do that. But if that's your schedule, that's not really letting the Holy Spirit move. So, the Holy Spirit was always wanting to, to establish the church through the Holy Spirit. Um, he said to Peter... On this little rock, I'll build my church. The five smooth stones that King David pulled out of the river. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. Five smooth stones is what slays Goliath. The church has to come straight out of the river of God's anointing. And the evidence of its reality is Goliaths will be slain. What is Goliath? Mammon? Principalities and powers? So, you know, the, the, the trick Satan's been pulling, just look what he does in the other religions if you need a type and shadow of what's happening in denominationalism. Well, how does Satan bewitch the masses through Hinduism, Catholicism, and Buddhism? Have you seen those glorious temples? Remember what that, that Jewish person said to Jesus, have you seen this beautiful temple? He said, yeah, it's going to be destroyed brick by brick, and it was. In 70 AD, Jesus is the prophet. His prophecy came true. So the bewitchment of the masses through religion has always been through art and architecture and ceremony. Always. So it's okay for us to have architecture and art and ceremony, but we need to make sure that the glory that that our the, the smooth stones that God builds his church on came straight out of the river and it's effective in slaying Goliath. If you're not slaying Goliath in one shot, straight to the forehead, you're not really a pastor, apostle, prophet, or teacher. If you're not living in the drunken river, if you're, then like Brandon Barthrop says, you're in the Nile. The devil's got a river too. So we want to be from the fountains of living water, the clean, flowing water. Uh, oh, that's so rad. There's a truck right in front of me that says fire authority. <laughs> fire authority. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! Fire authority! So... We are 
my personal testimony, God would not let me join churches. I couldn't do it. And I had a vision, you know, after having a fight with my mom, I had a vision of a helicopter swooping down and I saw Muslim people, millions of them decked out in rainbow garments. The Lord showed me the last day's harvest. And then years later, all I did was party and skateboard. But when I would ever get alone, I would worship God, pray, read Book of Revelation. And he just came to me in a dream. And then I had a dream about hell. And I finally found a little re renegade band, a, a little small rogue church in a house. They had apostles and prophets, rebuked masons and Catholics. And the anointing was there so strong that I, I started not wanting to, to smoke weed or drink as much. And pretty soon got fully delivered from those things. So the church of God isn't the beautiful temple you can see the human building it is the invisible kingdom that knocks the buildings down brick by brick so Jesus said I don't see with my eyes and ears but the one who's in me judges and if his judgment is true he says I don't testify in myself the father testifies about me and his judgment is true the testimony of the two or three witnesses is true the two witnesses are coming with power, fire breathing, judgment, justice, the power of God Almighty, transfigured next to the Lord of the whole earth. And you know what? They might even, in the process of transfiguration, make some errors, get arrogant, get some things wrong. The religious spirit is a fault finder. It's not looking at the glory and the anointing as evidence. Jesus said you'll know them by the fruit. We want to look at the fruits of a ministry. We want to see the glory. Is there signs and wonders? And is it not deviating from what's written? And if they're talking about something that's written that's a little less popular than what most people talk about that's written, it's still what's written. And if you don't have revelation about it, they're not weird for understanding something you don't understand. You could, like, pray. You could, like, ask for a revelation of what that means. You could just get the revelation yourself. So, the Church of God is not bewitching people with architecture and mammon. Although it will inherit all those things in the end. It is not trying to buy the ability to give people the Holy Spirit. It is ordained by the Holy Ghost, whether on the laying on of hands from the established system that is stemmed straight to the original apostles and Jesus himself that has never died, but it's gone into obscurity and gone underground and it's been scattered and it's been, you know, little small hubs no one knows about here and there in houses. It's cropped up and moves a God like the Azusa Street, uh, the, uh, that one Methodist... Uh, Revival in Wales. It's, it's, it's cropped up. Because God never dies. He never goes anywhere. Babylon appears to be stronger. But it isn't. So where's your heart set on? Building a, pr a pretty temple to allure people with mammon and architecture? Wh who's the God of fortresses, guys? The God of fortresses, the God of buildings was Nimrod who built the Tower of Babel he was the Masonic God he's the God of the Masons and he was called the Mighty Hunter and he was called uh, arrogant against the Lord or rebellious against the Lord and he wooed the masses through architecture and the Freemasons today they have their God who is the Grand Architect and they, they're bewitching the governments and, and the masses through architecture. And it's, very, it's a very strong power because you have a carnal mind and the carnal mind, it wants to be impressed with itself so it allows itself to be impressed with other carnal achievements as a way to justify its own need to be impressed with its own carnal achievements. So it's not wrong to like have a building. 
but the, the prophet said, you've gone to your own paneled houses and you've forgot the house of the Lord. Which is not, a, I mean, that is about being more concerned with setting up a kingdom down here than building the kingdom of God, which is invisible. The Son of Man had no place to lay his head. So in my own testimony, I avoided the religious system. Jesus ordained me and sent me himself. An apostle is someone who's seen Jesus' face. That's me. I've seen his face. And I've never said I'm an apostle in a church meeting. I've waited for God to say that. And I'm not even going to say that now. Uh, but point is, the kingdom of heaven's upside down. It's not what you think. It looks it's different than what you expect. Jesus, when, you've heard that phrase, when God wants to flex his muscles, he dies on a cross. The humility of Peter, they, no, crucify me upside down. That's the opposite of the towering architecture of the Catholic Church who claims Peter as their own, exalting themselves. You can boast in the Lord. That's not exalting yourself. If you talk about the actual glory in your ministry, the actual miracles in your ministry, that's just telling the truth. Exalting yourself is building your towers without the glory. Unless the Lord builds his house of labor, his labor in vain. And you could have a taste of the glory. And it, it even says in the scripture that God will let a seducing spirit bewitch people into thinking them they thinking they know God. God will literally let in the last days a strong delusion come on everyone who didn't receive the love of the truth. So there's going to be a spirit masquerading as the anointing in the last days and there always has been. Or and you know I don't really believe in full on black and white stuff all the time. Or I'm saying everything's not black and white like the, there is a such thing as utter evil and utter glory. But there's also a, a growth period where every single Christian is being transitioned from religion into Christ. Like Paul said, the laws of tutor lead you to Christ. Christ means anointing. You have to die to rise again. The law and the, the, the letter of the law kills. So you have to go through that season and an entire church can go through that process. So that's why I say, if the anointing's there, I fellowship with them, even if there's some religion. Because I've found in my life, Whenever I think all the religions purged out of me, some more crops up from the next fire baptism. New level, new devil. Glory to glory. So I'm not going to judge religious systems. I'm not going to, like, full on, like, I won't fellowship with you. Like, I go in there. I'll go in there. I'll join. And But if the Lord says, speak something, I'm going to speak it. And it's an abomination to put one man on a platform and silence the whole congregation. Paul tried that. Paul tried to preach for 12 hours straight. People died. They fell out of the windows. He learned He learned by doing too. You, we got to cycle people, cycle the whole congregation onto the platform one by one because everyone has a gift. And they don't have to pay a, like massive tuition to get some, some time on the uh, platform. We're supposed to be honoring the gift of God in people, not their monetary contributions only I had an experience recently where I was, at, I was invited to a youth church and uh, the pastor uh, he's, he, he's still got some assemblies of God in him he's still got some hyper grace stuff in him but he's got a real gift too but he, he called uh, he said who wants to freestyle come up on the stage and I was invited to that meeting so I, was, I I waited a minute no one came up there so I ran up there because I had freestyle He's like no I just meant to, I just meant out of the high school students and he like in front of everyone made me sit down and rejected letting me share my gift because in my head knowledge I misunderstood his request so he judged my knowledge he judged my um my human understanding and he didn't see my heart to, to, to give and to share and to participate and to love feast and I didn't get offended because I don't get offended I mean I strive to not get offended and I've had lots of victories in that area and I just thought like well that's 
that sucks to be you because you would have just got like an impartation so whatever but it made me sad that someone was there like mentally that someone was there spiritually like that was where they are with God it's like oh no that was weren't the rules so uh it's very clear in the book of Revelation Babylon the Great's drunk on the blood of the saints she's a container you know and it says they that wait upon the Lord will rise up on wings like eagles can you rise up on wings like eagles if you're in a container as Steve Ander- the apostle Steve Anderson preaches a flea is in a jar okay let's say, say you catch some fleas and you put them in a jar that generation, the first generation of fleas, if you open the lid, they can jump out. But if those fleas have babies in that jar, those babies will learn to jump as high as that lid. And then if you open the jar when they're teenagers, they can't get over the lip. This is what's happened in Christendom. Is we've had generation after generation of religion, we've separated from the anointing and God's structure which is just his own body. It's not a. It's not about titles. It's Jesus is what he is, and he moved the. Excuse me, the way he moved, and he and he did what he did, and then he said, "You're my body." So that's why Paul spelled out first apostles, second prophets, thirdly pastors and teachers, is because they were like, "Oh, Jesus was the apostle of our faith. He was the final prophet uh, that we're gonna make." all of God's people prophets like Moses prayed about. He was the shepherd of the sheep, so he's a pastor. And he was the great teacher. He was the great physician. He was all that stuff. So that's why the church manifests in that way is because we're his body and that's what he was. And we want to just be all shepherds. But Jesus was more than just a shepherd. He was the apostle, the prophet, the teacher, the physician. And he spoke in heavenly language, so we have tongues now. Everything he was, we are. So, let us move away from pseudo-powers into the glory of God Almighty and not try to buy the ability to give people the Holy Spirit and not try to buy our way into an office or a gift or anointing. If God calls you to give your money somewhere, I'm not saying not to do that, but I'm saying giving your money somewhere doesn't automatically give you the anointing. And, um... Every spirit-filled Christian I know calls calls um, seminary the cemetery. It's a very popular term because it's for real. You, 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 the way up with God is down. You can't. the The human institutions were built like the pyramids of the pagan nations. It's Masonic and not um, apostolic. So Jesus loves you guys, anyways, <laughs> and me too, anyways, because I'm still growing.